Coming at you from the AO Studios, it's the Fade Route with D and Z. Here are your hosts, D and Z. Powered by Riverside FM. Coming at you live from the AO Studio. Hey, yo, 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 yo. It's the Fade Route with D&Z, IMD, and we've got a great show for you tonight. We're going to talk about Fanatics Fest, fantasy football, and also some college football. But we're we'll beginning today's show with some baseball. Uh, the Braves just lost Austin Riley for the rest of the regular season with a broken hand. Braves just can't catch a break this year. Everybody's hurt. <laughs> Started with Strider, then Acuna, then Albies, Riley, Michael Harris was out for a long time, and the list keeps going and going. So, Z, how does the Riley injury affect the second wild card spot in the National League? Well, really, it doesn't affect the second wild card as much as it affects the third wild card. Because if you're looking at the wild card standings, San Diego's in at this point. But like, you got to think that San Whale's Diego vagina. is in. A whale's vagina. They, they are... <laughs> A good four games clear of the Braves. The Diamondbacks, who won a thing I like to call the National League pennant last year, from a wild card position, they are 756. So they're three games clear of the Braves. So at this point, I'd like to congratulate the Padres and the Diamondbacks on securing your spots in October. Now it comes down to <laughs> the Braves, who were just everybody ravaged else. with injury. Yeah. Well, not everybody else. Almost everybody else. And that's the infinite wisdom of Rob Manfred and his expansion of the playoffs. But it gives fan bases hope. And that's all you need sometimes. Think about it. I thought Last all you year, need is love. Nah. Nah, what sometimes. The said? That's what the Beatles said. But you know what? Love doesn't pay the rent. Uh, only in certain professions. But uh, unless you're Jordan. There you go. Nah, see? All you need is love. But... The Braves, they are 66 and 58, ravaged by injuries. If you had Strider, if you had Acuna, if you had Albies, if you had Riley, if you had a full season of Harris, well, you know what they say about ifs. So, you got to deal with what's in front of you. They're being chased down by the Mets. Currently, the Mets are losing to the Orioles. You're looking at one and a half game. They have a one and a half game lead on the New York Mets. Behind them, you have the Giants. Behind them, you have the Cardinals and the Cubs and the Reds. And you can even throw in the Pirates and the Nationals, man. They're only, you know, the Pirates have 58 wins and the Nationals have 56 wins. You get hot for a month and the other teams kind of like hold flat. You can start passing mm. some of these teams. So, what about the Marlins? Be- they got a shot. <laughs> no friggin' Your chance. expansion team? Contract them both. 46 and 79. That is the Rockies and the Marlins. Mind you, the Rockies, I believe, without Chris Bryant, like, yet again. So, Shock. you know, if if Anthony Rendon is Tony Wage theft, what the hell is Chris Bryant? But, um, yeah, the third wild card has created hope for about a dozen teams. Hmm. So that's kind of where you are right now. And that be, it also creates interesting questions. Like, Think about the Pittsburgh Pirates for a second. They're not they're on the periphery. They're not out, but they're not in. You have a rookie phenom in Paul Skeens, right? And he ha- has the potential to be great. He also is running up against his innings limit. Every inning he pitches is the longest inning, is the longest amount of innings he's ever pitched in his career. Do you shut him down? And you live to fight another day? Or do you believe that you can kind of stay in this thing like you're Lou Brown and the Indians? So, you know, it's a t- it's a t- quandary. You know, every time we win, we peel a section. So do you do that? Or are you too far gone? The entire National League Central's in this fucking thing. Like, you know, at the beginning of the year, we who could have envisioned that? The Reds, maybe. The Cubs, maybe. The Cardinals on the periphery, sure. Like, you know. We, we kind of have See, the, the problem. The, the, the problem I have is none of these teams deserve to be in, though. What's the problem? The Braves don't deserve to be in the playoffs. I don't want to see them in the playoffs. 
I don't want to see them. They're terrible. They're awful. They're hurt. I don't want to see them play. I don't want to see the Mets. I'm seeing the Mets getting fucking destroyed by the O's right now. And the O's are a playoff team, and the Mets are not. I don't want to see it. I know the Mets won last night in the, in the walk-off. Man, that's wonderful. But they're not. So you know they're not a playoff team. The Cardinals are trash. The Cubs are trash. The Reds are trash. These are trash teams. And they should not be in the playoff. The teams that belong in the playoffs are the Padres and the Diamondbacks because they earned it because they play hard all year. They're healthy and they're primed to take on a Philly team, a Dodger team, a Brewer team. So maybe, yeah, the Braves could get in, the Mets, maybe, Giants probably, but I don't want to see either. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see them get – I don't want to see that trash – I don't want to see the Padres have to waste a, a player or waste a starter and play in one of these teams. I'm not in for it, man. Yeah, you may not be in for it, but guess what? This is the situation that we're in because of the third wild card. Like there, in there is a possibility that Do whoever makes it. Do you want to see the Mets make the wild card? Yeah. Do you want to see my? That? T- I want my team to do well. I always want my team to do well. So that's the situation. Are they in the position of the Chicago White Sox? No. They're they're a game and a half out of the playoffs. I want my team in the playoffs. I would rather my team be in the playoffs than be watching from the crib. So that's me. So you may you may disagree and you have every right to disagree. But you know what? My team's in it. I'm not rooting against my team. I want my team to go as far as they possibly can. And if they don't get in, then they don't get in. But you know what? Because of the situation and because last year a wild card team, I believe from the wild card three, made it to the fucking World Series. It's possible. And what did that, what did that look like? What did that look like? Do they, do they look like they belong there? It doesn't matter. How did that play out? They got there. Now, yes, the Texas Rangers beat them handily. They still got there. They knocked out the Phillies. They knocked out the Dodgers. They knocked out your your supposed best teams. The, the Baltimore Orioles mm. got picked off last year, and they were one of the best teams in baseball. You got to get in. You got to get hot. That's all it is. That's what baseball is now. Remember the top two teams in each division? They all play. So they're rusty. They're going to be rusty, and they're going to get picked off. Plain and simple. That is the structure now. It's not about the regular season. Uh, as uh, I hate to say that, the regular season doesn't matter anymore. We got Major about League. thirty-seven. We got about thirty-seven games left. This is the sprint. This is it. Yeah. This this is it. The, the how many forty teams, games of the season? How many teams will win more than ninety-five games? Zero. Yeah. I think you're Zero. Right. I don't think you're gonna have any. It's crazy. You're going to have some it's that mediocrity. are close. Yeah, this is mediocrity disguised as excellence. You know, you like to talk about the Phillies, and they have a very potent offense. They can't pitch, dude. Like, the Dodgers, they're not great either. The Yankees are Don't meh. Say they, can't. they can pitch. Don't say they can't pitch. Their they relievers pitch. aren't that great. Yeah, they can't they pitch. Start, they have good starters. Ooh, what do you do? Eventually, they come out. They don't go long. Zach Wheeler didn't go long. Aaron Nola doesn't go long. Christopher Sanchez doesn't go long. Ranger Suarez, Suarez doesn't go long. Like the, you know, eventually you get into the soft underbelly of that team, and that's how you end up with 51 losses. So there you go. But yeah, this n- nobody is really primed to be a juggernaut, and you know that's how the Astros ended up back in this thing, man. The Mariners kind of gagged it up. Now, granted, you know, even the Mariners are still in, in the American League. They're 64 and 62. They're only, they're six and a half out of the wild card spot. They're chasing the Twins. Yeah, so, yeah, it's going it's to be a tough one for the Mariners. But <laughs> at least they've got the fallback, though. The, the Astros are only 60 Rays? and 56. How about, the Rays? How about the Rays are still in it, man? 62 and That's 62, crazy. 500, yep. Dude, like the... it. The seasons of the the Royals, the Twins, the Guardians, and the Astros have been underreported. Very, 
very drastically under report. You want to talk about a team with no pitching? That's the Astros, man. I don't even know well, how they're doing this, but they're doing. They're all on the hill. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, JV was supposed to be coming back, but you know, uh, th- that's exactly what it is. It's smoking mirrors and ah, offense. Smoking mirrors. Absolutely. Well, listen, but I you know, know what? This is I what we're. Ben- the, this is it, man. This is this is the summer. Like this is the dog days of summer, and we're getting ready for that sprint. Hey there, NFL football fans. This is the lovely Rita Sanchez, a.k.a. your option football champ for the 2023 NFL season. I'm inviting you to join us for the 2024 option, where we pick the winning teams for each week's matchups and compete against each other to see whose picks reign supreme. Are you in? Head over to CBS Sports and search for the Option 2024 League or hit the link in the bio on the Fade Route socials and join today. It's for free. Pick a witty name, some winning teams, and I'll see you out there for week one. Well, I know uh, basketball season is a few months away, but analysts are already predicting a resurgence from the Warriors and the Bucks. These conversations had me thinking... Which title was more important in regards to legacy? Curry's chip in 2022 or Giannis' chip in 2021? To me, this is a simple math lesson. Curry's chip in 22 is what, his fifth? No, the one... Well, no, he what got was four, it? right? He's, he don't he's got fourth or fifth? Curry. Yeah. It's got to... Hold on. It's got to be four. He doesn't have as many as uh, Kobe, does he? Well, well, let's look at it. But... Yeah. The, I can say this much though. How many does Giannis have? One. 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 So which one is most important? The last one that Curry got, or the only one that Giannis got? I have to say well, okay, that. So... I, I gotta say. I four gotta time, say. Four time, four, four time time champion. NBA champion. Okay, so this is fourth championship. Okay, so mm-hmm. wasn't his first. Was was not his first. He already had three going in, and. They, by all accounts, his legacy has already been settled. Like we know what we know, and we can un, we don't dispute what Steph Curry is. He's probably the, the greatest spot of say, shooter of all time. The only thing I'll say about that Z is if he loses the 2022 NBA Finals, right? That's supposed to be this is. After KD left, right? KD left right. for this one, right? Yeah. So this was, okay, we're, we're back to just being the Warriors again, right? And it's like, well, you won two, and then you won one with KD. Eh. Right? But the this fourth one, that really put the stamp on him. That put him into a different category, right? Because there are some people now that have him in their top five player of all time. Like, he's in their top five because of that, right? For Giannis, it's like, yeah, it kind of puts you on the map, but I'm I'm assuming we expect more from him, right? He should get back there. We're not going to say that's one and done for Giannis, are we? That's my only argument is that... That's my only argument is that if... If Curry lost that 2022 NBA Finals, mm, I think a lot of people look at him and that team a lot differently. Where Giannis, Giannis won, okay, yeah, but even if he lost it, okay, we would say, okay, he'll be back. We'll see him again, right? Because I think you would agree that Joker's one title, that that doesn't define him, Right? No, the back-to-back MVPs do. Right. So that's the right. that's the thing with legacy, though, tying it to that. Because what's the ultimate legacy debate that we have in the NBA? LeBron versus Jordan. So it's based on the number of championships you win. And a guy like Charles Barkley, right? What's his legacy? He didn't win shit in the NBA. Right? What what is right. his legacy as a player? Patrick Ewing. What's his legacy as a player? He didn't win shit. Uh, he, didn't win, he didn't win. He's a great player. What's his legacy as a guy who couldn't get it done? John Stockton, right. Carl Malone. Didn't win shit. So you right. know the, this is you know 
it, it's part of it. it. It shouldn't be the whole thing, but it's a significant part. It's absolutely a significant part of it. And a guy that already had three championships, his legacy was already cemented. Now, I understand that the second one, or the third one, was with the help of Kevin Durant. Oh, right. That one was right. that one that one was about Kevin Durant's legacy, like that was that was. What did that Steph, do for his legacy? That was Steph Curry saying, "Come here, little buddy. We'll give you one. We'll get you one." So that's not so about. What did that Steph do Curry. for Katie's leg? Like, what did that do for Katie's legacy? That 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 one. So we got? that that really started, in my opinion, that really started the the metamorphosis into the Kevin Durant we know today. Right, the guy who's just trying to go from team to team to try and get back to that moment because he wasn't the guy. You know, he was he went to a team that already had the success and he was the hanger on. And I don't think right. deep down in his heart of heart, I think he realizes that they didn't need him to win a championship. They already had two. So he was the cherry on the he sun. Them, right? Right, he needed them he needed before, them, the, right? but more than right, exactly. So it's like Ray Allen, the Heat. They needed him. They called him. The big three needed yeah. Ray Allen. So LeBron yeah. knew that. Yeah. And Giannis, like Giannis, I, I don't know what he. I, you figure he's going to get back there, but. The East is passing so you're by, taking, man. So you're saying it's so you're saying it's Giannis. The 2021 championship that Giannis won meant more to Giannis's legacy than it does to Steph's. So Absolutely. You're pretty much saying Especially Giannis if, if, is done. If if it's his only one, because as of right now, you're are you are what your record says you are, and Giannis only has one. Now, if his see if his career ended today, and Giannis only ends up with one. Right, he only ends up with one. How are you? How are you regarding Giannis's career as a disappointment, as a question of what could have been because of the back injuries, because he, you know, like he and Dame Lillard just got friggin' decimated. Like, what? what are, how do you view Giannis if his career were to end today, if he never stepped on the court well, again? I don't really, I don't really think much of him. So it, for me, it's whatever it's another it's it's a guy that was on a really good team and they made the best of that one year and they right. they they took it you know um but my whole thing is is i i really in my opinion it was the curry one because it, i think it defined him it really changed things you know it put him into an upper echelon and put him into a bracket i mean all all the Giannis win did was it brought a championship to the bucks i mean it, it didn't i don't think it really elevated his stature or really it changed it changed him at all I mean, he is who he is you know i think it's very impressive what he did because he didn't he didn't go to a super team and uh he didn't even cakewalk it he had to beat every everybody he played he had to beat everybody he played right I think they played the Suns that year. It was a tough yeah. team. Um, he was no cakewalk. So uh, he definitely earned it. Uh, but it's almost, you know what? It, it's all, I don't want to put, I want to say it's like Dirk because Dirk's win was so much more epic. But, and I don't even think that Dirk NBA championship defined him. I think he had a lot more other, he had a lot of other defining moments. But no. I'm right. Sure I mean, but, but that's the thing. Like, what what else do you hang your hat on if you're honest right now? Like what do you you know, what's your accolades? Like what are what are you gonna say? I mean th yeah, that's is he it. An MVP? The, he is an MVP, right? Uh, we can look that up. But you're looking yeah. at when you're looking at Steph, you had so many other accolades. You had so many other, you know, bright spots. Mm -hmm. but, and He's still in, and he has two a gold MVPs. medal. It's even more. So Yas has two MVPs. Two. So interesting, interesting. Two MVPs, a championship, and we still are not it's sure about him. Anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, so the Celtics are for sale. What do you think about Jeff Bezos throwing his hat in the ring? Oh God, that's that's interesting. I mean, he has a bottomless pit of that's money. 
So, yeah. I so don't word know. on the street is it's going to cost about between six and eight billion dollars for the Celtics, and then I believe that. And then if that if that is the case, right? All the NBA owners get four hundred mil a pop for that new team to join the league. Yeah. But what's his, what would be his angle? What would be his angle of like what you want to build like Bezos Arena? Like what? <laughs> like what would be your angle for buying the Boston Celtics? Why would you? Why would he want that? What, what does that? What does that do for him? A man who has everything and could do anything. Well, why the he- Celtics? Because he was de- he was denied an NFL team. Was like, he really? He, I didn't know yeah, because it was the he interest in the commies. Because he's from DC, right? He has he bought the Washington Post. He has all that. But then Josh Harris. Why didn't the NBA they owners own want him? Four hundred million dollars a pop. That's why. Like that's more money in their pockets. You bring a bill. You know yeah. the name of the game is money, my friend. Always follow yeah. the money. And you ha- yes, you have to deal because with the NBA you know wants, Jeff Bezos being a pr- add, schmo. Yeah, the NBA wants to add two more franchises. They're talking about possibly Mexico City, Vegas, and maybe back in Seattle. So yeah, but Vegas you know what? That also, yeah, I mean that's that's great. You definitely gonna you're you're gonna explode in that regard. But they're also getting off T the TNT right. Aren't they? Aren't they moving to Amazon? I believe. So. I think that's the. Uh, yeah, and there you go. And <laughs> there it is. One hand washes the other. You get our. You get us on Amazon. We'll give you a team. That sounds nice. Conflict sounds like an entry. interesting little bargain. Hmm. <laughs> well, sounds like uh, a backdoor handshake agreement. Backdoor something. Well, uh, Fanatics Fest yes. took place over the weekend at the Javits Center, and par- and. You know, it's it's uh, it was pretty insane. There's a lot of Gronk and Brady are walking around wearing each other's uniforms. There's a 40 yard dash. There was lots of autograph signings. There was lots of picture opportunities. Uh, there were different sessions where people were able to ask questions and hear Brady, Eli, Peyton, and all those people talk. So, do you think Fanatics Fest will be the Comic Con for sports? Potentially, they do have to iron out the fact that you're you can't char you can't nickel and dime people for everything, because once you get that rep, people are probably not going to come. Oh, you pay to get in, okay. Oh, you're paying you're going to pay for an autograph. Oh, you want a picture? That's it's actually fifty dollars. It's fifty dollars to get in. No, fifty fifty bucks to get in. That's not bad. Okay, that's not bad. Now, you want an autograph? That's more. You want a picture? That's more. You want a combo? That's more. You want to attend a Q and A? That's more. Like, eventually, it adds up from a financial standpoint. You end up bleeding people dry. So you do need to like. It's a good start. Like it, it was a good group of people here. Kareem was there. Tom Brady was there. You know, Jalen Brunson was there. Uh, CM Punk was there. You, know, you had the whole. Um, do your own, do your WWE entrance. You got a video. Like it was cool. Like, you definitely had some cool things going on. Costume contest. These, yeah, like these festivals, and that's what it is. It's a festival. You know, they they always run the risk of pricing themselves out. Now you you sent me about a month ago. You sent me the Pizza Fest thing with Dave Portnoy, and then I looked at the tickets. Fuck me, no way. Absolutely not. For pizza. What was it? Two hundred. Yeah, pizza. for pizza. Yeah, for pizza. It was yeah. over. Th- it was almost three hundred dollars for a ticket. Yes, you can fucking. I, I can eat my weight in pizza, but it's almost you know like that's that's absurd. Eventually, if you don't get the prices under control, people are going to think that way too, because it's going to be like, oh, I met Dan Marino. I met Dan Marino once before. Like, why am I going to meet him again? And I just now I spent. Fifty dollars meet him the first time. Now it's two hundred and fifty dollars, and even sign a football. So it's like you know. Yeah, I think, at the um, end of the day, it, it's it's price gouging. They have to be careful about price gouging. Yeah. So the pro- here's the problem is like he 
he is slow. Michael Rubin, when I say he, he's the owner of Fanatics, he's slowly taking over the, the industry, right? So he started out with Fanatics where he was just doing like uh, autographs. But then it moved on to now he pretty much houses all merchandise for all the sports. Like whether it's baseball, basketball, football. If you're ordering a jersey or if you're ordering a shirt, it's most likely being sent by Fanatics. I mean, he's got that, right? So now it seems like he's moving into the autograph arena. Where now he's going to probably wind up taking over Panini. He's probably going to buy them at Mm -hmm. some point. Uh, I think he already bought tops, um, and he's gonna start pushing all the little guys out. Like me this weekend, I proudly went to my local uh, card show at the Westchester County Center, where it was I think it was nice. JNS was the sponsor. Got to meet Jason Isringhausen, terrific guy, Is he? fantastic. And Billy Wagner was there, and I told him you're the real Sandman, and he gave me a fist pound because he knows he is. Uh, very cool. <laughs> very fun event. Um, Mike Tyson was there. Uh, your closer was there. What's the closer of the Mets? Diaz. Yep, he was there. Uh, Clyde Frazier was there. That was kind of cool. Oh, nice. But those shows are going to be the ones that are going to suffer. Because what's going to happen is because the, the money that Tom got and Peyton got and all those guys got for going to the Javits Center, you're going to have people that went to the lower shows wanting that kind of deal. The other part is, is like, right. oh, I'm going to go to the, I'm going to go to the Westchester County Center and yeah, it's 15 bucks to get in, but I can't really get the picture I want. I got to wait online to get an autograph. All they have are cards here, but man, if I go to the Javits Center, right? where they're doing Fanatics Fest. Man, there's over 80 athletes there. Uh, The photo is a real photo where I get to stand right next to the guy instead of crouching near a table. Um, I can sit in and talk to people and ask questions. Um, I can walk right next to Gronk or Brady. I can can check out gold gloves. I could do a 40-yard dash. And what's going to happen is, right, is like when – in about 10 years, maybe not even 10 years, about five years, when my son is 10 or 13 or 12, it's like, hey, let's go to the Javits Center so that while I try to go meet Pat Mahomes, you're going to be throwing the ball through rings or you're going to be running around with your friends and it's going to be just a bigger and better experience than a local show. And that's the problem. It's going to be bigger and better. Something at JNS and that all these other little card shows won't be able to replicate. But just think about this for one second. I'm just going to interject, right? You're going to bring your two boys. You're going to probably your wife. Your wife might want to go. You guys might want to make a day of it in the city. How much is for a family of four? How much is that going to cost you? Like that's the reason why a lot of families don't go to baseball games too. Like yeah, at the base level, fifty bucks. Okay, that's two hundred bucks. Okay, but the the other stuff, the more, right? Because it's not just oh, I'm gonna go in. Because now you gotta park, right? Now you gotta do the. Oh, you're gonna you gotta eat at some point. So it it really starts to add up. So you gotta be wary it about does. that a little bit. It does, but the problem is, Z, is that my son is not gonna want to go to the Westchester County Center. You're going to want to go to the Chavitz Center because it's a much bigger and a much better show. Like me, I have no problem on a Wednesday night going to a Westchester Knicks game and loving every second of it. When my son is 13 or 14, he is not going to want to go to watch the Westchester Knicks. Dad, why can't we go see the New York Knicks? Why are we going to see the Westchester Knicks? You know what I mean? We have the Knicks at home, son. You know, that's... That's what's going to happen. And then not to mention, hey, Billy's going to the Javits Center this weekend. Or yeah. Johnny's going to the Javits Center this weekend. How come we can't go? Can I go with them? No, we'll go. I'll get the tickets. We'll do it. Like That's what's going to happen. Like The local show is going to get killed by this event. And it's sad because the little guy can't do anything. There's nothing the little guy could do. Like, for instance, this weekend – 
Jason Isringhausen, his his uh, autograph was free. Like it came with it came with my entry ticket. I waited on that line. I got to talk to him about Oakland. I got to talk to him about St. Louis. Like I didn't give a fuck, right? That ain't gonna be the case. Like. And a guy like Jason Isringhausen isn't going to go to the Chavit Center either. Like, his time will be up, too. You know? Right. Well, they, I mean, if Mike you look at um, the looking at the list of baseball players, right? It's not that player. You, you, you got the yeah. star guys like Billy Wagner. Billy Wagner is a peripheral Hall of Famer. You know, I so had a great time. Actually, yeah, yeah. It was awesome, and there was nobody. Nobody wanted to pay for his autograph, and nobody was on his line. I felt bad for him, but you know, I got to talk to him for a couple of minutes before he left. But and I'm online. I mean, he's Jason lucky. And the the line for Jason Isringhausen was out the door. It's like, dude, he played here for like two years, and I started talking to everyone in line. Like, wait a minute. So Billy Wagner has more wins, more saves, lower ERA, uh, more all-star games. But all of you are on this line for this man? That's the real Sandman well, up one there. Thing. There's two things. One, he was part of Generation K. And number two, his autograph was free. So there you go. But, you know, and, and Billy Wagner should consider himself lucky that Flea fans and Met fans did not get on that line and pay money just to curse him out. So, <laughs> well, that's the other thing is like, I was waiting a minute. Wait a minute. Billy Wagner was a Met. Why aren't you guys on this line? He was a Met. There was a guy. There was a guy I was online with. He drove all the way from, uh, from Long Island to come to the show to meet Jason Isringhausen. He had five things that he wanted Jason Isringhausen to sign. One of which was a perfectly minted, stitched, authentic, Jason Isringhausen, number 44 jersey. Beautiful. Whoa. Had it on the hanger wow. and in the plastic and everything. He then had a, a picture of, of Shea Stadium with City Field in the background that he's having all the Mets, all his favorite Mets sign. He had him sign that too. A baseball, a base, his rookie card. He had Jason Isringhausen's rookie card. And he's taking all this shit out, getting it all signed. And Billy Wagner's just... Sitting there with his, just shaking his head, watching this all happen. I'm like, Billy, how is this happening? I want to be on your line. I just don't want to pay the fifty dollars, Bill. Can we go outside? Do you sign in the parking lot? No, but next time I'm definitely getting <laughs> Billy Wagner's signature because I have Mariano's signature where it says "Exit Sandman." So I want to get Billy Wagner to sign "Enter Sandman" because he started <laughs> using that in 1996, and Mo didn't start using it until 1999. So, mm, how about that? But I was very, I was very uh, close to. I wanted to get a picture with Tyson. I thought it would have been cool. John Starks was there too. I thought it would have been cool because oh, nice. he, uh, you know, he, he's the heavyweight champion of the world at one time. I mean, it's really cool. Uh, but the, you know, a lot of people were trying to get his picture, and you know, I didn't feel like waiting that long. And that's the other thing. I heard the fanatics thing went faster. They were able to move people quicker. There was more. There was a better system. In play, but well, I think at some Tyson point, also double dipped. He was at both, so, yeah. so it also was it was lo- it was. You know, wait, days. you know who was there on Sunday? You know who was there on Sunday who? at the Westchester County Center? No, Pete who? Rose. Oh shit, Pete Rose. He nice. went. So he was at he was at Fanatics on Saturday, and then he was doing he was doing Westchester County Center on Sunday. I almost went back because I was like, man, it's, it's Charlie Hustle, man. It's Pete Rose. I mean, that's. Mm-hmm. That's uh, and his and his autograph was not no, that expensive. Yeah. It really wasn't. It was worth it. I think it was. I want to say it was a buck forty nine, buck fifty. Oh, that's, but that's still, not bad really for her Pete Rose. Just to talk baseball. Yeah, with, just to talk baseball with him though. Like that's. I mean, I'm yeah. I'm more in it to take your picture with you, and to talk to you about a couple of things and to get your signature. I mean, I did get the injury guys involved. Just kind of, but you know, that, I'm more nice. into. Like, I, mean, I, I want to talk. Up. I had. A, I met. I met Pete Rose. Well, I had a, a chance encounter with Pete Rose. I was in Vegas for my 21st birthday with my brother, and we're walking through the we're walking through the Caesar's Palace Mall there. And for some reason, Pete Rose has a friggin' autograph table popped up, and just like I'm not really gonna, I'm not going over there. But I'm just gonna be like, I, I, I'm just gonna say something. I'm like, Who do you like? Pete, today, you should Pete? be in the Hall of Fame. I was like, Pete, you should be in the Hall of Fame. He's like, he raised, he fist pumped in the air. He's like, yeah. 
So yeah. Who do you like to defeat? Who do you like to defeat? You got the Reds tonight. Who you got tonight? Parlay. Oh god. What do you got? When owning a home, it's important to have heating and cooling professional available when things go wrong. Air Care Technicians is a veteran-owned HVAC company servicing the Westchester area. They are licensed to service, repair, maintenance, and replace all HVAC units. If your unit is not running properly or you would like to improve the air quality in your home, contact Air Care Technicians for a free quote. They offer same-day and emergency services for all of your needs. You can reach them at 914-315-1547. Air Care Technicians, 914-315-1547. But uh, listen, since our last broadcast, a trade was made in the National Football League. The Falcons acquired Matthew Judon from the Patriots. Falcons are not ready to give Judon a new contract yet, and he's okay with that. He actually said he's willing to work for it. He's like, they don't know what I've done before I got here, but I'm here now. I'm going to earn that contract now. Z, what does this do for the Hassan Reddick situation? So remind me, what did the Jets give up to get Hassan Reddick? I want to say they gave up a sixth round pick and a player. Think. Okay, so they just the the card the um, Falcons just sent the third round pick for Matthew Judon. So if anything, it sets the market for what they possibly could get at like the high level, right? Because you're not getting a second for Hassan Reddick, you're not getting a first for Hassan Reddick. You are going to have to trade him, Joe Douglas. Listen to us now. You are going to have to trade this man. He ain't coming. All right, so He's it says coming. the Eagles. Okay, so the Eagles traded Hassan Riddick to the New York Jets in exchange for a 2026 third round pick that can become okay. a second round pick if specific terms are met. So a conditional. So the, those con- those terms are not being met because he didn't show up, right? You <laughs> figure that those terms are not. <laughs> if the oh no, the, he didn't show up. Pick, and apparently the whole <laughs> Jet team didn't show up today at practice because I heard. That while Aaron Rodgers started a scorching five for six, he finished the day 11 for 26, where the ball either hit the ground or was caught by the opposing team uh, more than they should have, to the point where uh, Robert Sala almost had a cancel practice, and uh, Aaron Rodgers talked him into letting them finish because he thought they would finish strong. And uh, Robert Sala's uh, post post-practice uh, interview was just a fucking joke where he said, well, you know, that's a that's a, a championship-winning defense. What the fuck are you talking about, man? What <laughs> championship have they won? What happened today? What the hell are you talking about? Are you watching the same thing we're all watching? You guys look like dog shit today. Just say you look like dog shit. This guy, I'm, I'm convinced that he does not listen to his PR department or the PR department has gone south since I was there because he just doesn't know how to take his fucking foot out of his mouth with some of the things he says. Just say we were bad today. It's okay. It's okay for you to be honest with the media and say we didn't have it today. It didn't look good today. It didn't go the way it was supposed to go today. But for you to tout out there and say your defense is championship and we're still growing and we're still working through things. Working through things. The first fucking game is two weeks away. What are you working through? What are you working through? A, throw to B. To B, catch the ball and run upfield. How not to lose. Right. How not Five to years lose. of this garbage. Five years of this put a, garbage. Put a wig on Robert Sala. Put a wig on Robert Sala. What do you have? Aaron Boone. Oh, well, yeah. At least Aaron Boone is in first place. Or has a share in first place. He would actually be doing a lot better if he didn't have a clip. Yeah, if he didn't have Clay Holmes as his closer, he would have a lot more space between them. I will say this about uh, Aaron Boone. You can say you don't like Aaron Boone for whatever reason, his coaching style, the way he acts, and you're probably right. But for the team he has, he's getting a lot out of garbage, really. Because 
Glaber Torres is terrible. DJ LeMahieu is terrible. They have two guys on the team worth a damn. Where the hell is Anthony Rizzo? He broke his arm like two months ago. Yeah, he, he's not there. That's for sure. I mean, now you have, you have Ben Rice. You have LeMahieu. Like you already talked Ooh. about. You already mentioned it. Now Chisholm is out. Chisholm's looking to come back. <laughs> yeah. But but <laughs> Jazzy. Oh, jeez. But ex- exactly. He just situation. But this is exactly where they're they're coming from. Why they're they're overlapping in the Venn diagram. They emphasize the positives on stupid shit. Right. <laughs> Well, we uh, opened and closed the door really well today. Um, I got out of my car and I didn't hurt myself. And then I walked into the building, one foot in front of the other like I always do, and I did not trip. So We, we lost the game, but day. outside of losing the game, Clay Holmes gave up some soft contact, and we like soft contact. So soft it's one of those things. Soft contact. Yes. Yeah, that, exactly. Soft contact. But Robert Sala is the same way, man. Like, you put on these rose-colored fucking glasses and just like, oh, that, you know what? That defense is... I'm happy about where the defense is. What about putrid fucking offense? Like, that's <laughs> something that you need to address. I get it. You're At playing all, San you're, Francisco in two weeks. <laughs> you're dead. You're dead. And you don't even know that you're dead. Are you kidding me? Dead now, Brock Purdy, did, Brock Purdy did not look good the other day without his starters. But you know what? He's going to have him week one. So you probably should prepare for that. And you know who else is, Who else they're going to have? That defense. With Nick Bosa and with Fred Warner. They're coming Fred for... Warner. Uh, Fred Warner. Yeah, they're coming for Fred Warner... For, with Fred Warner and Nick Bosa for Aaron Rodgers' old ass. So you got to be very <laughs> fucking concerned with what's going to happen. And instead, you're painting this, ro- you're painting this rose-colored picture that this is all going to work itself out. I mean, yeah, you get the no, back Bowl to- on Saturday, whatever. But, you know, as far as whatever. Hassan Reddick, the longer this goes, the Jets are going to realize that if they don't get rid of Hassan Reddick, all of the leverage moves on to him, especially if the defense stinks, especially if they can't get to the quarterback. But, so, but see, isn't this, isn't this a good way to see how a trade is supposed to work? Yes. Hey. <laughs> We're going to trade for Matthew Judon. Hey, Matt, we're really excited to have you come here. We're not going to give you an extension right away. We're hoping that you can play into that. This is the scheme we're going to run, and this is why we think you're going to be successful. Great. I am excited to be a Falcon. I don't really want to be here anymore anyway, but I'm going to work for the extension that I want. I'm going to prove to you that I deserve to be in Atlanta. That's the player you trade for. That's the deal you make. Not this guy who came in to take a physical on April 1st and hasn't even been in Jersey since. Disaster. Absolute disaster. This is exactly the worst thing that could have happened for the the Jets. Because... Matthew Judon showed up Hassan Reddick in every way. The organizations showed up the Jets in every single way. And the only thing that it did was hasten his departure because Joe Douglas needs to come off that stance. He needs to come off that stance. But but see, we talked about this in real time. You cannot tell me that the Atlanta Falcons did not call you about Hassan Reddick. You can't tell me that. No, you cannot no, tell me not. that the Atlanta Falcons did not call the New York Jets and say, "Hey, we're just in Hassan Reddick. What are you willing to deal for him? Nothing. We're keeping him. We expect him to hear and to play." Okay, <laughs> Joe. Okay, <laughs> uh, Joe. You you know he doesn't want to play for you, right? Doesn't matter. He's our guy. <laughs> He's our guy. Your guy. Uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna wait for him to show up one day. Um, we're not going to give him an extension. We're not going to give him anything he wants. We're actually going to continue to fine him because we have to under the collective bargaining agreement. So pretty sure, pretty soon he's going to be paying for free. I mean, he'll definitely show up. All um, right, Joe. Yeah. Take care. <laughs> In New England, we'd like to make you trade for, for Matthew Judon. Great. Let's get him on the phone and see if this is a good fit. Because <laughs> we can't. We're, we're not going to need him this year. We need a hell of a lot more than him. When you get the response you want, hang up. 
But those are, those are those are two different, right? Those are two different perspectives, right? It's yes, two different completely. organizations that understand they understand how to make a trade, number one, but they also understand their team, right? The Patriots yeah. understand their team. They understand where they are right now. Matthew Judon, while he's a fantastic defensive player, unless I team him with God, we are not going to win games this year. No. Why am I gonna waste his time? Why am I gonna waste my time? Let me get some let me get something in return for him and put him in a good situation. Put him in a place where he can excel. Put him in a place where he can win. And let me get some assets back. Not this whole, well, you know, you're gonna play here whether you like it or not. He sound Joe Douglas is starting to sound like a drunk stepdad. You're gonna play here because that's what I said you're gonna do. I don't care. I give you an extension. I didn't say anything about an extension. You're going to play under with the contract I gave you. <laughs> then he's not going to play. Nope. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Because it's gotten to the point where you find him so much that I'm like, nah, man. No. Don't care. Do not care. And it's interesting because no. I've been watching the hard knocks with Saquon Barkley. And there's a point where Joe Shane is telling Saquon, hey, you know, man, I want you to come at, go out and test the market. You know, because, you know, I don't know what it is for you. And, you know, you go get a number and come back to us and, you know, and, and maybe we can work something out. And he's like, you know, can I have your word that you'll do that? And Saquon's like, my word on what? He's like that you'll come back to us and tell us, you know, you know, the number you get. He's like, I already told you what number I want. Like, this is a, you know, and it's almost like in his voice, you can say, you're wasting my time. I told you the number I want. You're telling me here you're not going to give it to me. This is over. This is over. I'm not coming back here. I'm not giving you a chance to match anything. Why would I give you a chance to match anything? I told you what I want. I want to be here. This is how much I'm going to play here for. Can you do that? I don't know. You want me to go out and find another job? And if that job is going to pay me what I want, you want me to come back and tell you what that number is? No, asshole. No. This is over. You know? Yeah, I mean, there's no... So that's no... the same thing. Yeah, well, it's just, it's. No shame was trying to anchor the NHL has oh, with geez. restricted free agency. Restricted free agency Nemo is the offer sheet and. Outfielder. He just well, made Nemo? an absolute ter- oh an absolute terrible error. They're throwing the ball all over the field right now. Oh, oh Jesus! Oh my God! Oh, ch- oh, oh God! Fantastic! Triple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A single turned into a triple and four runs. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. But what Joe Shane was talking about was restricted free agency in the NFL and in the NHL. You go out, you sign an offer sheet, you can go back to your team, and they can either say, yay, we're going to match that, or no, via con Dios. If you guys remember way back when, the New York Rangers actually signed Steven Stam- Stamkos to an offer sheet, at which point the Lightning were like, fuck no. We're not losing Steve Stamkos. <laughs> Fuck no. So to the Rangers? Fuck no. To the Rangers. Yeah. Exactly. So that's kind of what Joe Shane wanted. Now that's not how it works because we have unrestricted free agency where you can go wherever the fuck you please. And that's kind of the situation here. Hassan Reddick is under contract, so he cannot go wherever the fuck he pleases. He can go home and like it. Is that what's kind of he can go to Form Park or he can go home and like it. Those are his two options right now. Because for some reason, Joe Douglas has decided that we're hanging on to this guy. We're, this guy doesn't want to be here too fucking bad. He's a winner. God damn it. We're going to keep him here until he changes his mind. So uh, what, what's that going <laughs> to be? Once I get fired. Once <laughs> I get fired. That'd be great. He, Joe gets fired. Robert Sala gets fired. Hassan Riddick walks through the door. All right. Let's go. Let's, let's do, do this. this. <laughs> but what's the what's the dollar amount of the fines? What uh, what dollar amount does Hassan Reddick have to break? And is, is that what Joe Douglas is going for here? Is is this war of attrition? Like once he hits five million, he'll have no choice but to come to work. Like is that what's Ruin happening? His precious little field trip. <laughs> God damn, sir! I will. I'm just. I'll break him. I'll just absolutely break him. <laughs> and then he'll have no choice but to play. It's just asinine. It's absolutely asinine. But you know what? The Falcons got themselves a hell of a player to pair with Grady Jarrett. And yeah. they're they're doing some things. 
They're absolutely doing some things. We haven't ordered they're up the trying, NFC Seth. We're gonna we're gonna do that prior to next week's uh, opening kickoff. We're gonna order up the NFC South, and um, they're they're making moves. They're trying because that that division's winnable. That division's winnable yeah, for sure. So, you know, the only thing they got to worry about is Raheem Morris and uh, saying that Michael Penix has said all has done all he needs to do. But um, Raheem, 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 and Michael Raheem. Penix. What are you gonna uh, but do? anyways, fantasy football drafts are be starting up next week. I know I've got two next week. So Z, who do you like this year? Who's your sleeper, and who should people stay away from? Well, I don't know if anybody's gonna draft Daniel Jones, but you definitely stay away from Daniel Jones. Uh, that stay seems away. to be uh, stay away, wide away, stay away, 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 away. Jones. Now, I'm I'm not too keen on Dak. Like he had such a high year last year, you expect a drop off. You went from leading the league into interceptions to leading the league to touchdowns, and then down we go again. That's going to be the case. Uh, as far as rookies go, you got to like Xavier Worthy. Just because he's playing with Patrick Mahomes, he's going to absorb whatever mojo they got going on in Kansas City. And I think it's going to be a good pairing with that. If you're looking at, I, I'm intrigued by Bo Nix. I'm very intrigued by that. I'm hearing positive Ooh. things. I'm hearing positive Ooh. things at a Broncos camp. Now they're also saying positive things about Zach Wilson. So I don't know. Like there, there could be a lot of positivity coming out of Broncos camp. But you know what? Bo Nix has an arm. Bo Nix has a good arm. He's got a good coach. The cupboard's not totally bare. So. They, they definitely can do they can do some things um, I personally wouldn't draft Caleb Williams if I, as my QB1 I want to see a little bit before I decide to do that I, I'm just I'm very hesitant about that yes he's showing off in preseason when the lights are on bright and you're playing the best of the best that's when we know what's up right Wiseman once said you're playing guys who are going to be bagging groceries in a couple weeks. That's mm-hmm. the fact of the matter. So when it's real competition, let me know. Do not draft any Pittsburgh Steeler offensive player except for the running backs. Don't take Russ. Don't take Fields. Don't take any wide receiver they got because it's not going to be pretty. Don't take Fryer Muth. Sorry, like you, Pat, you're a good player. I can't trust you this year because I don't know who's throwing you the football. Friend of the so, program. yep, friend of the program. Give me Warren. Give me Najee Harris. I'm good. But other than that, like, you know, all your standard stuff, you know, like, is Marvin Harrison going to live up to the hype, especially with Kyler Murray as his quarterback? I'd be willing to take a flyer on it. Like, is he going to be my wide receiver one? I might have to draft him that high, but I don't know if that's the case. But, you know, I, I'm kind of also souring a little bit on Justin Jefferson, not because of him, but because of Sam Darnold throwing him the football. It's not Kirk Cousins. It's not going to be J.J. McCarthy. I expect a little bit of a backslide from, from Justin Jefferson, and it's by no fault of his own. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, and I'm tempering my expectations on some really damn good players. And it, like Josh Allen, a prime example. Who is he throwing the football to? Like, who is he throwing the football to? And Joe Brady likes to run the football. Keon so. Coleman. Keon Coleman. Okay. Who else? Cade and, Sh- Don't- Cade and Schultz. Yep. Uh, Knox. Uh, no. Cade Knox. And Knox. Dawson Knox. Wrong, wrong guy. Wrong guy with a really uh, rednecky sounding name. Dawson Knox. Hmm. Sorry, Dawson. So... That that that's not on Diggs. It's not it's not what he had. There's a little bit of a slide there. And <laughs> it's it, it it worries me a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Uh yeah, I mean for me, um I gotta get a quarterback that runs this year. Um contrary to you, I'm interested in fields. If he becomes the starter there, um, I've, I'm interested in Caleb Williams. 
I'm interested in Jaden Daniels because they're runners. I can get them on the cheap. Probably could get them at the end of the draft. Um, I don't want to overpay for my quarterback, but I got to get a guy that runs. One of the guys that I'm not, I am down on this year is Hertz. And I'm down on him because I would assume they got Saquon Barkley to take on the goal line carries. I can't imagine them getting down to the goal line and them running the ball with Hertz. And what did you get Saquon Barkley for? So that's one of the guys I'm down on. Um, as far as like who am I really high on and who I really want, I mean, if you if you get a top five pick, I mean, you want Tyreek Hill, you want CD Lamb. I wouldn't worry too much about the holdout. Dallas will eventually pay. You him. really take CD Lamb first round top five? Oh yeah. You really you really doing yeah. that? Oh yeah, he's really good. He's really he's good. He's really good. Uh, mm-hmm. I also I also like Jamar Chase. I'm not really worried about him holding out either. Um, running backs are tough because running backs get hurt. Um, you know, I'm not I'm I'm okay with Love and I'm, I'm okay with uh, I'm okay with Bijan Bijan Robinson. I'm okay with them, but I'm also Bichon. okay w- waiting. I'm waiting. I'm also okay waiting into the third and fourth round to take a mix in. Or to take a cook, uh, Eckler. You know, Eckler in Washington could be interesting. Could be, but I like Brian Robinson later on in the draft, in the eighth or ninth round, because I just like him. I think he's a better running back. I think he's a better player. Eckler really shit the bed last year. He just played like dog shit. Yeah, it's the Chargers, uh, though. That's uh, what they do. I like I like Keenan Allen. I like Mike Evans. I know those are legacy guys, but they they Mike Evans has put up a thousand yards every year he's been in the league uh keenan allen i think was the number 15 wide receiver last year that's pretty decent for where he's getting drafted wow the braves beat the phillies i don't know how they did that um so those those are the those are the guys i like um and like i said those are the people i'm trying to trying to stay away from and the sleeper the worthy kid from kansas city you know it looks like he's gonna be the ball guy it looks like that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty explosive. It's kind of a sleeper, but it's kind of not. I think Kyler Murray's gonna have a sneaky good year. Um, you could get him on the cheap in like the sixth or the seventh round. Um, I, I I really like uh, Jordan Love. He's probably gonna go undrafted. I think he's gonna have a good year. Um, the guy Chase Brown, running back on the Bengals, he's gonna be backing up. Um, he's gonna be backing up Moss. Moss is gonna get hurt. He gets hurt every year. Yeah, that's I think goes uh, that Chase Chase Brown's a good good one. So draft responsibly. <laughs> but, Absolutely uh, draft responsibly. Need some last minute fantasy football advice? Then the boys at the Fade Route have you covered. Check out Red Light Green Light One Two Three with D and Z every NFL Sunday noon Eastern during the regular season. D and I give you our top one, two, three fantasy starts or green lights, and our top one, two, three fantasy sits or red lights. That's red light, green light, one, two, three with D and Z every NFL Sunday, noon Eastern during the regular season. That's red light, green light, one, two, three with D and Z. College football is back this weekend. We're starting our run of football until 2025. Starts this weekend. No Saban this year. No Lincoln Riley. Uh, well, no Saban. Lincoln Riley has something to prove this year. Shandor Sanders is going for the Heisman. So what are you expecting from college football this year? Well, Colorado is already a fucking joke. Like, they're, they're already, like, put, they're putting their Instagram handles on their practice jerseys during camp. It's just a clown oh, show. That's a good idea. I like yeah. that. It, it's already begun. You're in, you you're know, in mid-season the, form, you. You're already in mid-season form. (laughs) Dion, Coach Prime, you're already there, my friend. Mike Gundy's already all angry white man, and he's talking about you know all the the NILs and and such. Oh my god! Now they have a QR. They have a QR code on the back of the helmet. Like, hold still, damn it! I'm taking a picture. Hold still. But. It, it, the, the I don't NIL know if it's real, but I saw like all the starters on the Utah, all the scholarship players on Utah's football team got new pickups. 
I don't know how true that is. I just saw it before we came on the show. God damn. Like, uh, the the door has been kicked open, right? Like, this, this is the world we live in right now. And this is the insanity of it all. It, you had the death of the Pac-12 last year. You had the radical realignment. Like, how is this going to affect play? Mm. At the end of the day, I don't think it will. I think the CC is still head and shoulders above everybody. I, I think there's still, you know, you're just rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Everybody, everybody who's worth their salt plays in the SEC. Everybody else is playing for second place. Now, I'm interested to see how a team like USC handles coming east, going all over the place. I, I, I want to see that. I, I want to see how UCLA handles that. I want to see how Rutgers d- does going the other way. Like, I, I want to see how these things kind of you know, happen because we're in uncharted territory. Talent wise, I firmly expect the teams that we think of as power perennials to be there. Right? I expect Clemson to be good. I ex- expect Al to be good. I expect I expect Georgia to be good. You know? Michigan, I don't know what to expect now that Coach Harbaugh's gone. Yet the talent is there, but are they going to be able to sustain that? I don't know. We're going to find out. But at the <laughs> end of the day, like it's the SEC and it's everybody else, and that really hasn't changed. All that's really changed is what table you're sitting at. Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, uh, it's going to be the Heisman watch. I'm counting on uh, Shandor Sanders to get it done. I also want to see Georgia. I want to see Georgia... Uh, really stomp of their way through the SEC because Nick Saban's not at Alabama anymore and I really just don't believe in any of the other teams in the SEC and I want to see how Dabo Sweeney does we haven't heard from him in a while Um, and see if he can get Clemson back on the map because honestly it seems like their nil money is not as good as everybody else's nil money well, no, it's not. And that's the thing. Like, Clemson doesn't have the the deep football legacy that, like, an Alabama does. Well, not many other schools do, right? Alabama, Notre Dame, it's a small handful that have that deep of a legacy. You know, a lot of, of you know. Alabama. Alabama. But you know what? Clemson, Dabo's got his own issues because he's been wrestling with the NIL. Like, he has been anti-NIL. Somebody better get to him and say, hey, dude, do you want to win or not? If you want to win, oh, we're going to have to pay some of these guys. Nick, Nikki Haley, uh, Clemson alum. Brian Dawkins, Horace Grant. Wow. Dolph Lundgren. See, all right. All right. Okay. We got something. Dolph Lundgren? I must break you. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a second. What? what? I must break you. Ivan Drago went to Clemson, ladies and gentlemen. That's awesome. But um, yeah, it's a like you can't you can't be in this this nil brave new world and then rally against it. Like you can't cut off your nose to spite your face here because at the end of the day, you're gonna be out uh, out on your ass, and somebody else will embrace that change and somebody will bring Clemson back. So so Dabo, I, I'm interested to see like is he going to finally kind of get off his soapbox, get off his high horse, and participate. So that's uh, that's an interesting one because Saban, as much as he was, uh, you know, old man yelling at the cloud, he still did it. Like he's like he understood that that's how we, he was going to get his championship. That's how he was going to get good. He was going to have to buy players over the table this time. So now that it's even more dysregulated, that is when Saban decided to get the hell out. And I really think that DeBoer DeBoer is in for a world of hurt in Alabama. They have, they're talented enough to be good. Been cast a very large shot. In college. In the pros, he's replaceable. But in, in college, Nick Saban is very hard to replace. Just because you change the office and you make it more player friendly, you make it brighter, and you make it more inviting, doesn't necessarily mean it's better. 
Nick Saban is one of the five greatest football coaches, college football coaches of all time. Okay. You can't really argue that. You got to put him up there, right? Bobby Bowden, Bear Bryant, maybe three. Maybe you could put Saban at three. And depending on how you feel about Bobby Bowden. So, you know, you, you decide. You you decide who, what your list is, but he's up there in the in that upper echelon. But Kalen DeBoer is in for he's in for a rough one this year. But a lot of teams are in for a rough one this year. And it feels unfair to pencil Georgia in to the national championship already, but they're an NFL program. They they run it like that. And their perennial contender, Kirby Smart, has him where everybody want everybody needs to be. Right? They're always impeccably coached. They're talented as hell. And it's going to be very difficult for another team to unseat the Georgia Bulldogs for a, a, a good period of time to come. can't help but just smile when you see a balloon. PopstarsBalloons.com offers spectacular balloon decor for all of life's events, specializing in custom balloon creations and installations for private events, corporate and school functions, photo shoots, brand events, and fundraisers. Led by certified balloon artists, the Popstars Balloon team shape balloons into custom works of art. Popstar Balloons provides full concept balloon design, build and installation services, as well as pre-assembled decor pieces available for pickup or delivery. Popstar Balloons is a woman-owned, small family business focused on providing professional balloon services using only high-quality, 100% biodegradable natural latex balloons made in the U.S. and Italy. They consistently prioritize the safest use and handling of balloons in a sustainable and responsible manner. Popstars Balloons is located in Westchester County, New York, but likes to party at events throughout New York City, Connecticut, Long Island, and New Jersey. Popstars Balloons can also accommodate balloon decor services for destination events. No event too big, no event too small, and their custom personalization service is the perfect touch. They also offer a full line of event decor options like backdrop, prop rentals, tablescapes, dessert table setups, custom signs, and they always deliver with a smile. Whether you're looking for gift balloons, classic decor, or large-scale design for a big impact, Popstars Balloons will create the perfect decor for your theme, vibe, and space. So if you have an idea in mind or need inspiration, Popstars Balloons decor will be the cutting edge and spectacular. Visit popstarballoons.com to pop your next event. It's the in route where friends of the show get a special segment with us. Want to be part of the action? Want to be the newest member of the in crowd? Well, you know what to do. Hit us up, faderoutemail at gmail.com, or slide in our DMs on IG at faderoutpodcast, or drop us a line on X at faderoutednz, and you could be next. Joining us on the in route. Today, we have owner and president of the Agora Men's Social Club in Largemont, Mr. Vincent Brusco. Thanks for coming on, Vin. Thanks for having me, guys. What a, uh, it's weird to hear that. Like when people discuss you being an owner of a business or something that was pulled out of the ether and you brought into 3D reality, it's kind of weird to hear sometimes. Yeah, it's surreal, right? Yeah. You made it happen, though. That's that's uh that's something in itself but listen we'll uh we'll start you off with this uh, along with being the owner and operator of the social club you are also active in brazilian jiu-jitsu so can you tell our viewers about bjj and how you got into it yeah so uh brazilian jiu-jitsu i've been training brazilian jiu-jitsu for seven years now uh i'm a purple belt under igor gracie if you're going to get a, get a black belt, if we're in the pursuit of a black belt, no one better than a Gracie. So um, my dad's trained Japanese jiu-jitsu for 40-some-odd years. He's in the Martial Arts Hall of Fame. He's a Shihan. 
and uh, they're very different in regards to the actual tactical approach to it. And one of his students, um, I bumped into one of his students, and I said, "Hey, listen, I think I'm going to sign up for Japanese jiu-jitsu." And this gentleman's a, a black belt in both, and he's like, "No, sign up for for Brazilian jiu-jitsu." I was like, "Nah, I think I'm going to do Japanese." Like, I'm telling you, sign up for Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It's so addicting; you're going to love it. And I knew two other guys that did it. I reached out to them, like, dude, you would love it. It's such a rabbit hole. I'm a big seeker of depth, um, so I'm all about going down rabbit holes and and seeing where things take me. And I was doing CrossFit pretty regularly at the time, and I was in I was in good shape. And um, I went and just you know stepped into the unknown, which I think is such an important part of any journey you go on is, is the discomfort. And I stepped into the academy. I said, hey, I want to sign up for a class. And the professor at the time. Was still there. Um, he was probably 156 pounds. Um, he's like, yeah, come back and, and we'll set up a class. I was like, all right, cool. So we did a private, and he mounted me, got into full mount, and I was probably 183 with maybe you know single digit body fat. So I was like, I was in good shape, and I couldn't move. <laughs> wow. I, I was I was helpless. And I realized, I was like, oh, I don't know how to protect myself. Like, I don't know how to do – if I get into a fight, I think I would know what to do, but I really wouldn't. Mm. And in that moment, I real—I was super humble. And uh, I was like, yeah, I have to do this. And it's funny because, you know, you wear the gi and we were doing warm-ups and running around and, and doing the warm-up. And I would get – I was like tired. And I was like, I'm, I'm not in this type of shape. I'm in like CrossFit shape, but I can't – I can't do – I'm not in jiu-jitsu shape. So – it, it just becomes a super addicting, you know, at, I did it when I was seven years ago. So I was 33 when I started and it gave me this real sense of confidence that I never had in my life. And I think that's the big takeaway from it. It opens up so many opportunities, but for me, it was, it, it provides such a, a, an avenue of confidence and it's a great workout no matter what. Um, but for me, it's really about the headiness, the, 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 the thinking element, the chess, the human chess element of it. And then obviously um, the rabbit hole that it provides. No, totally. Like, how often do you do it? No, totally. Like so it's funny. So my wife's a teacher. So in the summer I could get in uh, three, four days a week. Uh, but in the school year, I'm going maybe once or twice a week. Okay. Uh, it doesn't feel like it. It never feels like it's enough. I, I joke. Yeah. It's like all my other pursuits of, of, you know, Agora and the coaching that I do are all just so I can have more time to do jujitsu because <laughs> it is that. Intimidating. Yeah. Wow. Well, the Olympics Olympics wrapped last week, and while they have amateur wrestling and judo, they don't have Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Would you like to see it added as an Olympic event? Um, Yes and no. Yes, in the sense that I think that if you take wrestling and judo, you kind of have jiu-jitsu in a sense, Mm -hmm. uh, minus some of the submission stuff. So in that regard, it seems like it'd be a natural progression, and obviously it's it's so well-renowned and um, it's world, obviously there's competitions throughout the entire world, but there is something to it that it's not. Um, I think that there's so many amazing competitions at ADCC and IBJJ, and um, there's just so many amazing competition uh, networks that it almost feels like punk rock that it's not. So yes, in the sense that obviously on that scale, you're gonna see the best of the best of the best, which you've kind of already seen a lot of these competitions. Um, but I think there's also something about it being kind of alt and punk rock that makes it kind of cool that it's not in the Makes it kind of special, right? Yeah. Well, two years ago, Tom Hardy secretly entered a Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournament and made all of his opponents submit. If you were staring at Tom Hardy on the other side of the mat, how would you attack him? Uh, it's funny. Uh that scene in Batman. <laughs> you know exactly what scene I'm talking about. You know, when he talks about the shadows, uh, you know, him owning the shadow. I could, I could go word for word with that. I was born to die. M- molded by it. Born in it. Molded. Um, I, didn't, I didn't see lights until I was already a bad. Um, I, 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 I think, a bit, you know, a big part of jiu-jitsu is the idea that, you know, you, you compete against so many different people you know different sizes uh different weights different you know different capabilities different skill sets and you really just don't know when the other person is gonna offer you an opportunity to capitalize on 
So I think that, you know, I've competed in, in two tournaments. My, when I first signed up, um, I wanted to do one per belt. So I did one at white belt uh, and I did one at blue belt. And I recently, well, last year I got um, my purple belt. So I will do one at purple belt at some point whenever I feel compelled to do it. Um, so co- competing is very different. It really sucks you out of reality and into like this vortex and you're kind of, it's like, so surreal it's it's bizarre it, it, it's such a different experience than just rolling your adrenaline's pumping like you're just you're tired in a completely different way um but i would just approach them to the best of my ability and the skill set that i the limited skill set that i have and there's so many amazing people that do and mario lopez is an avid jiu-jitsu guy um tom hardy keanu reeves um, there's so many people that have, you know, uh, Anthony Bourdain was a big mm-hmm. jiu-jitsu yeah, guy. Yeah, a lot of famous yeah. people are getting Joe into Joe Rogan it. Yeah. and... Uh, Joe Rogan. Yeah, Joe Rogan, obviously, yeah. being the, the, uh, probably the biggest advocate outside of actual jiu-jitsu practitioners yeah. that do it for a profession. It's it's wild that you mentioned that too. Like it's, it's uh, the yeah. one that strikes me that the, the biggest the that celebrity that jujitsu practitioner, Al, practitioner Al, Al fucking Bundy. Like Ed O'Neill yeah. is a yeah, fucking um, Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill. Yeah. It's unbelievable to me. Unbelievable. But um, like like you mentioned, but, um, you like recently you started Agora Social Club in Larchmont. So yeah, what so, made you decide to pursue this? Like what? When you woke up one day and decided, I want to start a social club. I want to start a social club. Why? Uh, I I guess, yeah, somewhat. So six years ago, uh, a buddy of mine was going through a a series of uh, events that was very unfortunate for him. And we would talk pretty much every single day. And one day he called me up and said, hey, you got to start a men's group. And I was like, okay, um, sure. I don't know what that looks. I know of men's groups. Uh, I never facilitated one. Um, but sure, let's let's see what that looks like. So I reached out to everybody I knew that I had bigger conversations with, not just the water cooler stuff, but bigger conversations, a little bit more, you know, a little bit deeper. And to my surprise, about 24 guys showed up to the first the first Council of Dudes meeting. Wow. And it's funny because in that first meeting, when I was I was pulling to get coffee, and that voice inside my head was like, "Just cancel, cancel. You don't know what you're doing. You're going to embarrass yourself. You have to cancel this. This is not going to go well." And in that moment, I realized it was like that fear that comes up in any new pursuit that we we, we, we go on, any journey we go on, there's always going to be that fear trying to keep you small. Um, so that was six years ago, and, and we did it um, graciously at, at coffee shops and on you know in, on Zoom meetings during COVID, and we did it in um, uh, apartment building kind of common areas. And over the last four years, I've been saying, you know, in doing that work, and I have my life coaching certification, you know, I've been saying guys in a place that's, you know, stripped of ego, that isn't jujitsu, that isn't the gym, you know, that, you know, there's there's um, a comparison narrative that I fall victim to very often. I'll look at that guy, and that guy's bigger, that guy looks more jacked, whatever it is, you know. Um, so I just want to create a place where guys can go and let their guard down a little bit. Um, we do monthly men's group meetings. We do monthly breath work. Um, it is a key fob access, so got, members do have access to this space on their own accord, so they can come and work from here. They can just grab a coffee. We have a, a take a book, extensive take a book, leave book library. So there is this kind of community element to it, but there's also kind of the coaching and the men's group stuff that really... Um, really brought it home for me and I wanted to give it a home. I wanted to not just be kind of this vagabond nomad journeying through different places because I was always on someone else's schedule right. and uh, I couldn't really own it to the way I wanted to. So um, so I kind of just put it down and put it out there and um, four, like, four mantras kind of came up for me as I was doing it and the first one was you know on the journey it was like don't lose your dinosaur. Like this idea came to me and um you know, I think we lose that as adults, like this novelty. I think kids have that beauty of, of just approaching things head on. Um, and then the other ones was the magic is real because, you know, God or whatever you want to call it starts to show you these signs of things that confirm what you're thinking, right? There were so many serendipities. When I first started thinking of Agora, um, people just saying things or other things that would come up. I was like, oh shit, this is a real thing. Like, this is real. Um, the, the third was uh, follow the golden thread, um, which is a longer story, but that's that feeling that you get, the that that you can't really put words into uh, that pulls you. You know, it's not forceful. It's a flow-based kind of 
driven mission almost. And the last is, you know, from, you know, obviously still the dreams. Uh, if you build it, they will come. Just knowing that if you put in the work up front and you show up to do the work, the results, although maybe not in your time frame, the results will, will come through. Definitely. Now, uh, Definitely. The, there are some now, uh, stigmas that are attached with social clubs and certain, clubs. certain impressions. Yeah. So, you know, the so, general idea, you know, like general people idea, think that social clubs like are for retirees or single guys that don't have any friends or being in an exclusive club, people hear exclusive and they think exclusionary. Like certain people are not welcome if only a certain group of people is welcome. Um, is there something truly Atagora for everyone? And what would you say to the people who are uh, speaking about the exclusion, exclusive equals exclusionary? So it's a great question. Uh, you know, it's funny when you tell people you're in a social club, they instantly think of cigars, and whiskey and, you know, girls and, and, and that type of stuff. Poker, you know, card games. Um, this has none of that. You know, there are guys who come into the men's group who are through the recovery program. Uh, there's no TVs in here. Uh, there's no wings. There's no Sunday football. Uh, this is for gentlemen. This is a thing for guys who want to grow and develop to be better men, better husbands, better brothers, better fathers, better sons, uh, contributors to the community. Um, so in that sense, it's not for everybody. Um, there are guys that just want to stay complacent and stay where they are in their, in their rut of life. And that's okay. I'm not against people being comfortable. Uh, but there is something to be said about leaving your comfort zone, being vulnerable against, uh, with guys that you've never met before and putting yourself in uh, uncomfortable situations, you know, being around guys that you've never shared, you know, intimate things about yourself and being vulnerable. So in one sense, it is for everybody because everybody is welcome to, to walk through the door. And, you know, we obviously are, are trying to also, you know, build a community around like-minded individuals who are about growth and wellness in mind, body, and spirit. We have, you know, we did uh, 5K Sundays throughout August. We do monthly ruck walks um, because, you know, in my, in my experience, it's been a mind, body, spirit. When those things start to dial on the same frequency, you know, you want to show up and be better. So when I'm eating right, if I'm doing a lot of jujitsu, I don't want to eat like shit because I don't want to perform poorly at jujitsu and I have a lot of clarity and therefore my mind, you know, I'm, I'm thinking better. I'm, I'm responding to life versus reacting to it. Um, so there is something for everybody, but I think that something is a humanistic connection and not as an actual tangible space. That's fair. I mean, it, fair. It, it, you I mean, come together, but it, you're also you like, together, you sense the exchange of ideas. Like, you sense the exchange yeah, of ideas. So. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So we totally. will get you out of here so on this one, Ben. You uh, you're the president of Agora Social you're Club. You're the president of Agora so, Social Club. So what events do you have going on? What events do you How have can someone become on? a member? So and what do you remember. see for the future? Do and you see expansion? Do you see like, what do you see? Like, what do you like? Pie in the sky. What's your vision? Pie in the sky. What's your vision? Yeah. Um, so the big vision is a one-stop shop for like-minded guys to go um, to become better versions of themselves and to live more authentically. And I think that's a big part of my, my personal mission or my personal journey is to provide guys with entertainment, space, and insight and perspective to help them find their own golden thread. And this is just the tangible brick and mortar location for that, to bring that out of men. Um, my bigger version of this is having a, a facility that offers a, a large coffee bar, um, you know, workout, you know, a jiu-jitsu mat for sure, um, community workspace, some type of gym, cold plunge, sauna, some physical therapy treatments. Um, I want, I, you know, for me as a father, a husband, having a full-time job, I, I, you know, doing all these hobbies, if I have to get one more hobby, my wife would probably fucking kill me. But, you know, having all these different hobbies, I'm going to this place, I'm stopping here, I'm working here. So the idea is to create one space for guys to go to get everything they need to get done throughout the course of the day um, and have multiple locations. I know therapists and coaches in different states. So I want to be able to also offer that type of service through these locations because I think most men 
Um, I have quotes all over the walls here, but one of my favorite is by Henry David Thoreau, and it's the massive men lead lives of quiet desperation. And uh, I truly believe that most men do live this this life of just, you know, somber silence. And uh, when you hear the suicide rates, you hear all these things that, that happen amongst men, uh, it kind of becomes hard not to do something about that. So I want to be a place where guys can go. And it's a one-stop shop, multiple locations. You know, you're traveling out of town and you're stopping in in Austin, Texas, and you know that you could, you know, swipe your card and you're going to be surrounded by guys that are all on the level that you're on, having the same conversations. You're going to be having jujitsu affiliates. You're going to be being able to get in your workout, get in your sauna, your plunge, get some work done, and uh, just be surrounded by like-minded people. Well, that, that's quite the vision and quite the quite the, vision the uh, quite, quite the, the future that the, Agora uh, Social Club has Agora Social Club moving forward. And Vinny Brasco, thank, thank you for coming, brother. Brusco, thank you for sharing that with us. Brother, uh, how, can with us. Uh, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, what are the socials and log on away? What are the socials and log on away? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me. Uh, anytime I get to share this story, it just it means a lot to me and. Uh, I really appreciate it, and I, I enjoy you guys what you guys are doing. I'm not the biggest sports guy, but I appreciate you guys uh, bringing me on and having this conversation um, because, again, sports are such a great outlet for a lot of guys, and um, and I just really appreciate you guys having me on. Um, socials are going to be at Vinny Brusco on uh, Instagram. It's Agora underscore Westchester and uh, agorasocialclub.com, and I offer a seven-day free trial uh, events. We have Again, 5Ks are coming up throughout the fall as well on Sundays. We have a speaker series that's going to get started up in the fall as well. Um, we have monthly breathwork sessions, monthly men's groups, uh, and just a, a lot more coming down the pipeline. Just further connections. We have affiliates with jiu-jitsu and sensory deprivation and CrossFit, physical therapists. So um, there's a lot to offer. So you can just head on over to agorasocialclub.com, become a member, seven-day free trial. You get to test that a little bit. And then there's three packages, the man, the myth, the legend, based off of what you think would uh, help you become the best version of yourself. Awesome. So thank you for coming on, brother. And then hopefully you, uh, we will catch you again down the line. Uh, we will catch you again down the line. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. I really you appreciate it. You got it. And if you want to be a, the next you member of the in crowd, hit us up, faderoutemailatgmail.com or slide in our DMs on IG at faderoutepodcast or drop us a line on X at faderoutednz. And you can be the next guest on the in round. Your favorite podcast has its own merch line now. Go to the Fade Store with DNZ.com today and check out our releases in apparel, accessories, drinkware, and more. Ever wanted an alleged superstar t shirt? We got those. You want some yoga pants? We got those too. And we're not done yet. We have a lot of exciting collaborations and new products on the way. But check out what we have now at the Fade Store with DNZ.com. That's the Fade Store with DNZ. Who is the best of the worst this week in sports? The Fade Store presents the alleged superstar of the week award. All right, boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's time for the Alleged Superstar of the Week. You know how it goes. We put up a poll on our X account at FadeRouteDNZ and on our Instagram poll at FadeRoutePodcast. And you vote, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote. And the winner of said vote gets a shout-out on this here show and takes on the coveted-ass trophy. And do you know who took on the coveted-ass trophy last week, D? That would be Raygun. No. Raygun? Who the hell's Raygun? The Australian breakdancer who is in deep shit because now people are dude <laughs> like, I'm not kidding they were they're investigating her for le- multiple levels of fraud like they tasked her with making the breakdancing team but then she didn't allow some people to participate she hired her husband as the coach but like, she rigged the judging it. this is some corrupt shit right here but breakdancing is one and done and she fucked it up for everybody congratulations Raygun that was last week. This is this week. Who are your nominees for Legend Superstar of the Week? D. All right. First up, I've got Raheem Morris. Uh, Michael Penix did enough in two games in the preseason and does not need any more pro reps. What? 
What? Excuse me. What planet are you Stand on, Rudy? Who? Who? What? He's done enough. Enough. Re Morris, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Number two, Clay Holmes. Blew his 10th tenth game on Sunday Night Baseball at the Little League World Series in front of a bunch of children. <laughs> Most blown saves Oof. in the majors, but his team is in first place in the American League East. Clay Holmes, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And number three, Brandon Crawford. It's kind of a sad one. Released by the cards today, he's a four-time Gold Glove winner, three-time All-Star, but in 83 at-bats, he's hitting 169 with a homer and four RBI. That's enough to get you fired, Brandon. Brandon Crawford, you are my alleged superstar of the week. What do you got, Z? All great choices. I mean, Clay Holmes, you can't really, like, you can't argue that. It's inexcusable. Did, he's, uh, he's bound to well, win. Do you, ha- do you have the most damning statistic? This is the first Yankee closer with 10 or more blown saves since 1987. Mr. Dave Rigetti. So, you're reaching way back. You are reaching way back on the last time a Yankee closer was so terrible. I'm going to start with Yerson Mascara. Who? Well, he plays for the Wolverhampton Wanderers. He plays for the Wolves in the Premier League. And they started their season against Arsenal. Okay, this is going to be a tough challenge already. In about the 83rd minute, Gabriel Jesus, one of the talented Arsenal strikers, has to tie his cleat. So he bends over to tie his cleat. Mascara walks over, oil checks... Gabriel Jesus on the field. Like, literally goes, sticks his hand, cups his butt, and then just kind of like pulls up. Jesus, understandably so, stands up, it's like, what the fuck just happened? Sees him and shoves him to the ground. Shoves Mascara right to the ground. You'll never guess who got the yellow card. Not the guy sticking his hand up another man's ass. No, that, that, that was not the case. Jesus for shoving him. Earlier in the match, Mosquera also attempted to choke Kai Havertz. What the fuck? What is going on here? (laughs) What is happening? May I also mention that this was Yersin Mosquera's first ever career match in Premier League Soccer. Buddy, you keep playing like that. It's going to be your last. Yersin Mosquera, you are my alleged superstar of the weeks. Number two, the New York Jets. Hideous. Hideous practice. Five of six for Aaron Rodgers. Goes right down the toilet after that. And to make matters worse, you have your coach trying to find the silver lining. There is no silver lining. You played like crap. Why is Robert Sala allergic to saying things that are true? Why do, does he need to put on the rose-colored glasses and accentuate the positive? Sometimes there is no positive to accentuate. Sorry. New York Jets, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And then, last but not least... I gotta go with Brian Flores. It's a a bad one. Mm. So, Tua on record about his time in Miami with Coach Flo as his head coach. How Coach Flo was less than complimentary to Tua. Essentially trying to break his psyche. Saying that he was not not good enough that this is he's not the right person for the job that he is dog shit for lack of a better term Tua is very public with this very pointed naming names at which point 
of course, go to Brian Flores for comment. And he doesn't deny it. He also doesn't really apologize either. Because two is kind of turning into a pretty good player. Funny what a little change makes and what a little positive reinforcement does. Not necessarily rose-colored glasses, but a little, just a touch of positive reinforcement. It works wonders. You know what else works wonders? Being humble enough to admit when you make a mistake. Not moments where you need to reflect as a man and say, what can I do better? Yeah, I think you know what you can do better, Coach. Coach Brian Flores, you are my alleged superstar of the week. I think we've said our piece. Go to our X account at Fade Route DNZ and our Instagram poll at Fade Route Podcast. And you vote, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote. And for our nominee, you're better than me. Just do better. Just do better. This has been the Fade Route with DNZ. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Catch our podcast on Wednesday nights on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to your podcast. So until next time, stay fade, everyone. Time for us to run the go route. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you liked what you heard and you want to hear more, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Leave us a review, rate us five stars, turn on subscription notifications, and share on social media. Tell your friends and spread the word.